quite some time ago, a young bear, upon reaching his 21st birthday, said to his mother... Uh, I think uh, I'll take a walk in the rain. You go out in your bare feet and you'll catch cold. But he paid his mother no heed and took a three-hour constitutional in what amounted to a torrential downpour. Oddly enough, he didn't catch cold, but he did contract a severe case of up-and-down fever, which ran up and down the coast at that time of year. I feel awful. Where am I? Citrus of Lemon Hospital. I'm your nurse. And I shall watch over you until you're well healed again. The fever-wracked Bruin had a nasty time, and for a while it was doubtful whether he would ever pull through. And then, suddenly, instead of taking a turn for the worse, he took a turn for the nurse. Boy, what you do to me? The bear got his health, and the nurse got her husband. They were married in the little church around the corner, up the hill, across the tracks from Grandma's house. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Give the little lady a bear hug. We now move forward in our story some ten years later. Mr. and Mrs. Bear reside in this cozy cottage. They have a ten-year-old bear son. Well, <laughs> that is, he doesn't run around bear. He's a, a bear, a little bear. I mean, well, you know what I mean. Daddy, where's my baseball glove? Don't ask me, kid. There's so much junk lying around here, I can't even find a front door. Oh, it's true. The house was a mess. And it was all because Mrs. Bear sat around all day watching television and munching chocolates. Apple! Are you in this room? I'm over in the corner watching the radio. The narrator said you were watching television. Television's busted. I'm watching radio. Well, look, Apple, this place is a mess. And it's about time we cleaned up around here. She cleaned up all right, and she started by making oh. up the floor with Mr. Bear. Leave me alone when I'm watching radio. This deplorable situation existed for one year, and then one day Mr. Bear put his foot down. Ow! Ooh, I'm sorry, kid. I didn't see you. Apple! Uh, I'm going to make a very important phone call, if I can find a phone. It took one full week, but by tracing the wire, he finally located the instrument. Hello? Home Economy Bureau? Say, uh, send over a home economist, will you? Why are you doing that? Because somebody's going to come over and see how we're living, that's what. You'll send one over? Kino lady. She's on her way. So is dinner. Porridge is on the table. Whereabouts is the table? It's in the dining room somewhere. We'll find it. Thanks to the steam emanating from the porridge bowls, they found the table and prepared to dine. Ooh, ooh, this porridge is too hot. Yeah, you're right. It is a trifle warm. It's too hot for me to eat. Come on, we'll take a walk in the woods and let it cool off. What about the home economist? Let her cool her own porridge. No, no. I mean, suppose she gets him and finds nobody home. So she'll wait. Well, as if you hadn't guessed by now, the home economist was named Goldilocks. Mmm, this place needs... Dusting. I don't know how she did it, but the next thing she saw was the porridge on the table. Better sample this and make out a consumer's report. Mm. Brand X is far superior to brand Y or Z. And it tastes just like the higher priced mush. Next in line was the durability test on the furniture. They're all Danish modern. Making a note of it, she then went upstairs to examine the bedroom, which was a very difficult thing to do as this was a one-story house. Three Beds, leaping lizards. Uh, yes. <laughs> Goldilocks was once the voice of little orphan Annie before she had her eyes fixed. Anyway, our little home economist tested all three beds and eventually fell asleep on the smallest of the three. Well, we're home. Let's see. Hi. Somebody's been eating my porridge. Yeah, somebody's been eating mine. Whoever ate mine even ate part of the bowl. Mush burglars. Don't be silly. It was probably the home economist. Oh, my gosh. Look at my rocking chair. It's still rocking. We've been invaded. Calm down. I tell you, it's probably the home economist. It was then the Goldilocks snoring fell upon their ears. I hope it isn't those boys from UCLA looking for another mascot. I'll get my gun. It was a mighty concerned threesome that ascended the stairs. I thought this was a one-story house. The snoring's getting louder. Well, sir, they spotted Goldilocks sleeping in the little bear's bed. <laughs> well, that, that's better. You in the little bear's bed. Give your name, rank, and serial number. Oh, hello. I'm Goldilocks, the home economist. Now, you see, Ethel, I told you. Say, uh, what do you think of our living conditions, Annie? Goldilocks, I think you're living in squalor. Isn't that near uh, Beverly Hills? By squalor, I mean that your living conditions are deplorable. Awful, real bad. That's what I've been telling Ethel for years. Uh, what can we do about it? Move. I shall see to it that you live in a nice, clean, modern apartment specifically designed for bears. Wonderful! And so the three bears moved, but they weren't happy. Nice, clean, modern apartment. Phooey! Well, at least it's got air conditioning. 